constructing a nation of slot machines. With the simple insertion of a coin, we can get cigarettes, food, ice cubes, chewing gum, insurance policies, and Phil Harris singing The Thing. <laughs> but <laughs> for the infuriating ultimate in coin machines, listen to the opinion of one citizen as we join Fibber McGee and Molly. Did you see the paper this morning, Molly? Well, I just glanced through it, which was easy because there was a big piece cut out of the middle of it. I cut that out. That's what I'm talking about. Did you see this article about Wistful Vista installing parking meters? No, I didn't, sweetheart. Hmm. How could I when you chopped it out of the paper? What about parking meters? What do you mean, what about them? It's a dirty political outrage. That's what about them. Why is it? Because what do you get for it? What do you buy for your nickel or your dime? Parking space. And what is space? Space is empty air. Go. Here we have the city charging the taxpayers ten cents for the use of their own air. <laughs> Get your hat. All right, taxpayers. What are we going to do, uh, pick at the city hall or squirt molasses into the parking meters? We're going to the Bonton department store. Why, did they install the meters? This has nothing to do with parking meters, kiddo. This is about my electric razor. <laughs> You wouldn't make a U-turn in the middle of a conversation. <laughs> How did your electric razor get into this? Well, when I cut this article out of the paper, on the back side of it, there was an ad for electric razors, which reminded me that I'm going to take my electric razor down to the Bonton Complaint Department. What's the matter with it? That's what I'd like to know. <laughs> I've only had it six years, and the dad read a thing stopped cold on me today. <laughs> While I was trimming an old toothbrush. <laughs> And hey, be sure to bring a dime with you, too, because I want to try out them parking meters. Oh, we're back to the parking meters now, are we? I thought you wanted no part of those. No, I don't. But I'm a good enough of a citizen that when my city says i got to pay ten cents to park my car, I'm going to do it. As long as it costs two bits to put it in a parking lot anyway. <laughs> but I warn you, I resent it. And when I resent... Come in. Well, for goodness sakes, it's his honor, the mayor. Do come in, Your Honor. Thank you, Molly. Hello, McGee. Hi, Latrivia. Hey, what does that bunch of pocket-picking high-binders on the city council think they're doing anyhow, huh? Uh, in the... <laughs> in the first place, McGee, don't raise your voice to me. Oh. In the second place, picking pockets requires a certain dexterity, which, individually or collectively, I doubt if our city council possesses. <laughs> about the new parking meters, Mr. Mayor. He doesn't like them. Why? I don't know yet. I ain't tried them yet. <laughs> well, frankly, McGee, I was not in favor of this parking meter experiment myself. No. I'm still arguing with the city council about it, but so far they're sticking to their guns. Do they all have licenses for it? <laughs> <laughs> for what? To carry guns. <laughs> Gosh, if any ordinary citizen like I was to carry a pistol around, I'd get slapped into the pokey so fast that... No, 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 no. No, you misunderstood me. I did? The council doesn't actually carry pistols. I mean... Oh, you mean double-barrel shotgun. <laughs> so they can get you going and coming. Oh. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Let me explain. How can uh, you explain a bunch of councilmen acting like gangsters? I always <laughs> says that this cowboy influence could be carried too far. <laughs> By George, one city official start packing revolvers with round barrels because there ain't a square shooter in the lot. By... <laughs> Chance, McGee. Let him explain. Okay. Thank you. I was only trying. After to all, he's the, the one that has to. Face... <laughs> he's the one that has to face the city council. All of them with loaded pistols in their hands. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. One of these days, some trigger-happy pistol-packing politician is going to lose his temper and blow the trivia's ears off. Nobody is going to trigger my law. <laughs> going to pull my shooter to shoot. Shoot a council at me. Look, when I said the council was gunning in the sticks, you said they're sticking their fingers. I mean, when they get the lead out, when they shoot their way into it, you were the one. I didn't do it. They won't. I was. 
Out at the Wistful Vista rifle range, they use your portrait as a target. Oh, my goodness, how interesting. My portrait, eh? Yes, yes. We've all taken a hand at shooting your ears off and shooting your nose off. But when it comes to shooting off your mouth, you're still the champion. Good <laughs> Okay. Let me know when I'm even with the parking meter. A little closer, a little more. Is that it? That's good. <laughs> That's as fine a job of parking as I've ever seen you do, dearie. I don't know why they build these curbs so far out in the street, anyhow. <laughs> Give me a dime, will you? I'll see if I have one. Incidentally, how do these parking meters work, anyhow? Well, it's a very simple system, kiddo. It was originally dreamed up by the gasoline companies to keep you moving. I, I thought it was so you could park. No, <laughs> you thought it was. <laughs> That's what everybody thinks. But here's how it works. You need a dime to park an hour, you see? Yeah. So you wheel in... Find you haven't got anything but a half a buck, two cough drops, and a poker chip. So you wheel out again and go looking for change. You can't find a place to park any place to get change, though, because every time you try to park, you still need a dime for the meter. But you haven't got because that's what you're driving around, trying to find a place to park so you can go in and get some. That's a very interesting description. So you keep driving around till you find a place where you can park for free, which is naturally three miles from where you wanted to go in the first place. <laughs> then you take a cab back to some place where you can get some change, then back to your car, drive downtown again and put your dime in the meter, lock your car, walk to the place where you wanted to go to in the first place and find, A, it's closed, B, you forgot what you wanted to buy in the first place, and C, you couldn't buy it anyway because you left your wallet in the cab. <laughs> Hardly worth the effort. <laughs> it's simple, huh? I'm sorry to ruin your theory, but I do have a dime. Oh, thanks. Here. Well, here's the procedure. I stick the dime in the little slot. <laughs> turn the handle. And presto, the arrow pops up for 60 minutes parking. See? Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. Look what it says on the hand there. 60 minutes parking. Plenty of time to buy your Red Cross Christmas fields. Yeah, that's a good way to remind people. Well, come on, we better get into the Bonton here. Oh, boy, listen to that clock ticking away. We only got 59 minutes left already. <laughs> Watch this revolving door, kiddo. Watch it. Why did you go around three times, dearie? Well, I just like to have people see me going around with a pretty girl. <laughs> Where's the complaint department? I'll take this electric razor right into the complaint. Attention, please. Your attention, please. Will the gentleman who lost his grandfather's Christmas gift kindly come to Lost and Found? We have a package here marked Old Granddad. <laughs> I wonder if Uncle Dennis is around here, McGee. He had a package like that one. Yeah, yeah, for about ten minutes. Remember the time... <laughs> oh, hey, look. There's Wallace Wimple. It is at that. Hello there, Mr. Wimple. Hello, folks. <laughs> you waiting for somebody, Wimp? Yes. Santa Claus. Oh. He doesn't come on duty again for 15 minutes. I have a little gift for him. Oh, a gift for Santa Claus. Ah, that's sweet. It's just a sort of a sentimental thing with me. Oh. You see, Sweetie Face and I... Sweetie Face, that's my big old wife... <laughs> married on Christmas Day, so every year about this time, I drop in here at the Bon Ton and give Santa Claus a little token straight from my heart. What are you going to give him this year, Wimp? Oh, the same thing I always give him. A good poke in the nose. <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Wimple, how is your big old, or your, uh, how is Mrs. Wimple? Well, she's out of town, Mrs. McGee. She 
was appearing on some television shows. Oh. She spent weeks and weeks in front of the mirror practicing different expressions. Oh, dramatic actress, huh? No, she wrestles. <laughs> Say, we haven't seen much of you lately, Mr. Wimple. Been staying close to home? Yes, I'm tending pretty much to my knitting. <laughs> when Sweetie Face left, she said to me, Wallace, well, she said, <laughs> I want you to stay home and keep busy, so I'm going to give you something to knit while I'm away. What'd she give you? A sweater? No, a broken collarbone. <laughs> going to stand around till Santa Claus gets here, Mr. Wimple? Oh, no. I'm going up on the mezzanine and write Sweetie Face a letter. Sort of encourage her in a new career. I wrote a little poem I'm sending her to. Oh? All about her wanting to be independent. A poem, eh? How does it go, Wimp? It goes... <clears throat> Dear Sweetie Face, you've yearned to be on your own a big success. And now you're wrestling for a fee with Hammerlock and body press. On TV, I've watched you toss them. On their trunks, they land and moan. And my wish for you, my dearest, is that you wind up on your own. Desk is over there near the. Yes, Your attention, please. Will the store detective kindly come to the sporting goods department immediately with a loaded gun? There's a moose loose. <laughs> a moose? How would a moose get loose in the sporting goods department? Somebody blew too hard on one of our moose calls. <laughs> they think a loose moose in the sporting goods department is bad. Wait till they hear an angry elk in the complaint department. You got that in the electric razor over here? Right here in my purse, dearie. Up for you. You've been telling me to shave expenses lately, so I thought I'd... Attention, please. Will the lady who left the big boy in the Hopalong Cassidy suit in the toy department please come and get him immediately? He's... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me, Mr. Cassidy. <laughs> Interesting place, almost, a department store. I oh, oh, look who's coming, Molly. Old Milky Milcox, the double rich kid. Hi, Junior. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hello, Molly. Hi, pal. Hi. Hey, I can't talk to you very long because my car is parked at a parking meter, so do you know, pal, that every week there are 65,000 babies born in the United States? Yeah. And the lucky ones that are raised on safe, easy-to-digest pet milk will be healthy and happy because pet milk gives the baby... You don't all have to the... stand here and tell us, Mr. Wilcox. If you're over parked, run along. Tell us later. Yeah, I'm parked against a meter, too, but you don't see me getting in a panic every time I... Uh, how much time we got left, Molly? Oh, about a half an hour. Well, uh, I can take a few seconds, kids, because oh, yeah. it's so important to babies that they start life with every possible advantage. Mm -hmm. And with the important milk, minerals, and vitamin D that pet milk gives babies... Well, why tell us? We're not babies. Run along and save Yeah, them, trickle Molly. along, milkman. My gosh, you don't have to be so particular. Well, I, about... I guess I'd better at that, pal. Yeah. Anyway, you already know that pet milk sterilized in its sealed container is absolutely free from harmful germs. Which is why doctors recommend it so highly for bottle-fed babies. And I've got just about four seconds to get my car out of hock, so I'll see you later. Uh, so long. Oh, hey, so long. Isn't he nice, McGee? He's one of my pet salesmen. <laughs> He's everybody's pet salesman. But that ain't getting this razor return. Come on, let's get over that. Your away. attention, please. Calling Mr. Hemingway. Mm -hmm. well, Mr. Hemingway, please come to the meat storage department immediately. It's across the liver and into the freeze. <laughs> Thank you. Across the... <laughs> That's a novel twist. <clears throat> Where's the complaint department? Right here, dearie, I think. Unless that sign that says complaints mean shipping department. Yeah. But look, the window is closed. Oh, I'll fix that. Hey, hey, open up. Hey, you in there. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, hi, bud. Is this where you come to bring a complaint? No, this is where I come to listen to them. Oh. <laughs> the customers are ones that bring them. That's what he means, sir. Yeah. I got a complaint about one of your electric razors, bud. It don't work right, and I'm beefing, see? Well, I'm glad to know you, Mr. Beefen. Hmm? <laughs> you just step right up the window and I'll try to talk you out of your complaint. Oh, okay, but I didn't mean that my uh, name was say, that. Say, uh, who's the lady here? Mrs. Beefen? 
No. No, no. Of course not. I... Well, sorry. I, I thought you two were together. Huh? Uh, just wait your turn then, lady. Mr. Beefen was here first. <laughs> Then, sir. Just a second, but let, let's get this straight here. I didn't say my name is Beefen. I simply meant that's what I come here for. Oh. Well, why didn't he come himself? <laughs> Who? The fellow you came here for, Mr. Beefen. Huh? Is he a charged customer because if No, he... no, no. Just a minute. <laughs> just a minute now. You got this all snarled up. Kindly mind your own business, madam, and you wait your turn. <laughs> I told you this gentleman was ahead of you. I am not. I never got ahead of her in my life. <laughs> Neither did anybody else, too, either, side. Si. Thank you, dearie. Let me take a run at this. Now, look, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Gleep. Courtney J. Gleep. <laughs> All right. Now, I'm sure we can straighten this out, Mr. Creep. Our name is not Beefen. No. Let's just forget all about Mr. Beefen. Well, that's fine with me, baby. He's been nothing but trouble so far. Good. Now, our name is McGee, Mr. and Mrs. McGee. This gentleman here is my husband, and we have a complaint. Well, I can see where you've got a complaint, baby. <laughs> What's he kicking about? Why, with a cute kid like you. Oh. <laughs> what I'm kicking about. I'm kicking about this razor. The doggone thing won't shave. How old is it? Six years. Well, it isn't old enough to shave. <laughs> six years old is hardly... Say, although come to think of it, I shaved when I was only six. You shaved at six years of age? Yes, I did. I took my father's straight razor and shaved my uncle Ichabod. Huh? You've heard of the Headless Horseman. <laughs> This is ridiculous. Of all the people in this store to talk to, why did we have to get you? Why did you have to what? Get you. Gesundheit. Thanks. <laughs> hey, I didn't sneeze. Neither did I. Well, then it must have been me. There must be a draft through here. Stand back while I close this window. Hey. Now, wait a minute. Hey, hey, open up. Hey. Hey, open up. You see, kiddo? I told you I'd get them guys to make an adjustment on that electric razor. Yes, and to think they did it with just a little screwdriver. Yeah. But why are we sitting here in the car, dearie? Start it up and let's go home. No, nope, not for four minutes and 35 seconds. <laughs> why not? Because that parking meter ain't run down yet. I've still got more than four minutes coming. I paid 10 cents for 60 minutes, and by George, I'm going to get full value. We're just going to sit here till the time is used up. So just relax and say to yourself, hi, Oli. Hi, Oli. Well, hello, missus. Hello, McGee. Is waiting for somebody? Nope. I'm waiting for this parking meter to use up the time I paid my good money for. The city ain't going to rook me out of three cents or three minutes. Well, now, McGee, that's a very good idea. That's it. Me, I got my own day to beat them parking meters. How, Oli? I walk to work. <laughs> also, I walk home. I beat them twice a day. <laughs> And with the ten cents I don't put in the parking meters, I'm saving gave my kids an education. On the other hand, if they get education, they earn more money, buy cars, have to put money in parking meters pretty soon I'm back working as the janitor at the house club. <laughs> <laughs> Say, how is your family, Ollie? All well, I hope. Oh, sure. Thank you, Mrs. That is all except little Lars. He brings notes home from teachers. She says he gets B in geography class. I give him licking. You give him a licking for getting a B in geography? Well, that ain't so bad, Ollie B. Yeah, and this B was a bumble. <laughs> Little Lars, he catch B and put it in teacher's hat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My missus, she always think that the teacher have B in bonnet, but Little Lars shouldn't try to prove it, you know. And uh, what does this teacher usually think about his deportment? Oh, she recommends his deportment back to Sweden. <laughs> Hey, McGee, how are you feeling? You you breathing pretty good? What do you mean, breathing pretty good? Certainly. Why, Jack? I used to wonder, according to porking meter, you used to expire. Oh! Be <laughs> around that, Scrub. So long, Mr. Let's go. You've got your money, sir. You're all gone tootin'. Get it. Where's my ignition key? In the ignition. Oh, yeah. Well, here we go. was five miles out of Peoria in 1925 on a moonlight night, I'd think you were pretending to be out of gas. No. 
I got plenty of gas. I bought two gallons yesterday afternoon. <laughs> Probably flooded. We better better just wait a minute. How could it be flooded? It huh? hasn't rained for ten days in this Ah, oh. uh, good day, officer. And good day to you, ma'am. You and your father just pulling in here, are you? <laughs> I ain't her father. No, we ain't just pulling in. We've been here an hour. Then why didn't you put some money in the meter? We did. Her likely story, McCushla, it says expired. Sure, it's expired. We used it all up. We were just leaving. Then why... Well, listen, mind you now, I don't want to be unreasonable, but I've heard all the excuses This that is I... not an excuse, officer. The car won't start. Well, try it now and let me hear it once. Okay. No. <laughs> just as I thought. Now shut it off. Now, look, officer, I'm telling you, this car wouldn't... Save it, you bladder skite. Oh. I'm going to give you a ticket for over-parking. Your license, please. <laughs> we don't carry it with us, officer, but we were married in a little church on the top of Kickapoo Hill in Peoria. No, 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 he didn't mean our marriage license, Molly. He meant my driver's license. Oh. It's in my safe deposit box, officer. I'm always afraid I'll lose it. Oh, fine. Well, that'll be an extra charge on the but ticket. But I, I happen to have a photostatic uh, copy right here. A photostatic copy. <laughs> oh, yeah. well... All right, then. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, photostatic. Yeah. Seven and McGee. 79 with full distance. That's right. Very safe. Uh, here. Here. Here, here. Uh, cut the noise over there. What do you think you're... Oh, hello, Hibbard. What's going on there? Taking out the parking meters, Clancy. Mayor's orders. Experiment was no good. <laughs> so, I get a ticket for parking against the meter that ain't there. <laughs> Give me that ticket, Buster, so I can tear it up. How about the dime you put in the meter, McGee? You mean you're not going to sue the city for that? Ah, uh, it's worth it to me to be able to tear up a traffic ticket. Let me have it, officer. Certainly, me bucko. Boy, is this a pleasure. <laughs> That's the prettiest looking parking ticket I ever saw. <laughs> Lay in there in the gutter. Well, that's that, I guess. Let's go home, McGee. Okay, so long, officer. Hey, hey, give me back my driver's license. Uh, just a minute, lad. I needed to write out another ticket. Another ticket? For what? Littering up the street. What? <laughs> Don't waste paper around in a reckless manner. Uh, Ordinance 236A in the old book, which the judge will throw at you when your trial comes up. Oh, uh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a little while ago we mentioned Red Cross Christmas seals. This is the right time to buy them and put them on all of your Christmas mail. Tuberculosis can be stamped out and is being stamped out with the funds derived from the sale of Christmas seals. So buy plenty of them and use them freely. Just consider the small necessary expense to wipe out an unnecessary disease. Good night.